I, I would uh, make four points, uh, give you one possible solution, and then illustrate with three, two or three examples that I'm permitting uh, as to how policies go wrong in, in actual practice. And none other than this morning's speaker, Mr. Ramamurthy, talked about this asymmetry, and he said that this asymmetry was man-made. Now, if the asymmetry is man-made, then surely man can undo what he did. You know, so that gives me a lot of hope. And coming from Ramamurthy, who gave you specific examples of why he thought this was man-made, I think with the right policy, we can undo this uh, asymmetry if we really want to do it. So that was my uh, first point. Uh, the second point, I think uh, the young politician who came this morning made that point, and he said, government is all about status quo. I couldn't agree more with him. You know, government is all about maintaining status quo. So anybody who expects bright policies from the government is simply going up the wrong street. You know, that's not what they were meant for. They were there to preserve what was handed over to them and not, not to rock the boat. Basically, you, you, if you are expecting the government will come up with the right policies, I think uh, uh, we are just knocking on the wrong door. Uh, government can be forced to deliver right policies. That's a separate issue, and I'll come to that in my solution. As to how you can nudge the government to deliver you the right kind of policies. So that was the second point. The third point that I wanted to make uh, which I have increasingly come to realize, you know, when I came here eight years ago to join the government after so many years in the private sector and overseas, uh, I did not believe this, but today I believe that our development paradigm, India's development paradigm I'm talking of, is simply not sustainable. Okay? I, I don't believe that our development paradigm is sustainable, and we need to move to a very different kind of development paradigm. Okay. During the last five or six years, when this country has delivered its highest ever growth rate, okay, guess what? Our human development index has dropped by eight notches. We have dropped from 126th position in the world to 134th position in the world. Whereas in Mr. Shankar's time, we were gradually climbing from 148th position in the world to I think when he left the service, we were somewhere around the same level where we are today. So, <laughs> so I think we need to, to, to de-emphasize this growth and this growth uh, paradigm that we are, is, you know, wave that we seem to be riding. And uh, we need to figure out a way of taking development to the people rather than attracting people <coughs> to where the development is. So I, I think we need to rethink this paradigm and rethink it from the scratch because the road that we are on is simply not sustainable. And I can tell you this because energy is my field. We will simply not have the energy to fire that kind of development paradigm. Simply not have it. That was the third point I wanted to make. The fourth point I wanted to make was just to put in perspective the so-called shining India. I mean, if people seem to forget the realities of this country, and I just want to take a minute to bring to you what the country to which we belong. We are the poorest country of the world. There are more poor and hungry in this country than there are in any other country or any other region of the world. Okay, so let's not forget the country to which we belong. Uh, that's number one. Second, uh, no matter which way you, you cut the pie, most of our social indicators, most of our comparators lie in sub-Saharan Africa. They don't lie elsewhere. We are the only country in the G20 group for which this is true. We are the only country in the G8 plus 5 group where it is true. And we are the only country in the basic group where this is true. No other country in any of these groups has the kind of socioeconomic uh, parameters that we have. And there is increasing data to show that most of our socioeconomic parameters are comparable to sub-Saharan Africa. In fact, our number one state, number one state, which is Gujarat, compares with Indonesia, and the number two state, Kerala, compares with Philippines. All the other states' comparators are sub-Saharan.